it never ceases to amaze me how much money players leave in raid or leave on the table when they list stuff on the flea market simply because they don't know mechanics or some of the information out there. This video is just going to be a quick short tips video showing you five things that you can do that will not only make you more money in raid, but make you more money on the flea market when you go to sell stuff. The first one's going to be centered entirely around uh, weapons you have that you get out of raid, found in raid. Primarily things like SA-58s, M4s, and specifically this TX-15 DML. I got this out of a scav case, an Intel scav case, but you can find them in mark rooms, uh, get them out of moonshine cases, uh, 95Ks, those, they show up, but it's a full TX-15, uh, and a lot of people will just go, maybe they'll pull the suppressor off, sometimes they'll pull the stock off, but they'll sell this thing right here. This guy sold this thing, and there's a lot of parts on here still worth some money, uh, and he's selling it for 90 k we're gonna make about 250,000 on this and I'm gonna show you how real quick. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disassemble it and I'm gonna sort out the parts here that you should sell versus not sell. Suppressor's obvious, right? PRS Gen 3. Uh, we're gonna vendor the Colt, but the uh, MOE AR-15, uh, the barrel, we'll sell that. Uh, vendor, or we'll vendor those, sell that. This is kind of an iffy, this is kind of an iffy, but everything else over here, you should be listing on the flea market. Let me move that stuff so it's out of the way. So we'll start off with some of these things that you might not realize. The M-Lock 2.5 sells 15, 20K. The M-Lock 4.1 sells. This guy's got it listed for 60K. It might sell. I usually try to sell mine for around 40. They sell there. The barrel, usually another 40K, even maybe 50K. PRS Gen 3 is somewhere between 20 and 40K. Uh, 50K, they usually don't sell. Uh, the Ultra 5 is the big one. Again, a lot of people pull that off. 75k 60k most of the time uh the pistol grip even now it might only be selling for 12k but th it's more money than that you could get out of this the raptor charging handle this thing sells from anywhere from 25 to 40k uh sometimes you can get 50 but i usually sell in that range just to try to get it to sell a little bit quicker especially with limited slots and if you're really feeling like you want to sell more stuff you can even get away with selling these things for you know 15 20k sometimes the uh the, the hand guards um and then the upper even will sell for about 20,000. and then even after all that's said and done you can sell the tx15 disassembled all the way down um we uncheck operational only here usually about 30 to 40K. Some reason people will buy these things. I usually don't, I usually just vendor it. Um, everything over here, I just vendor, but you can even sell the uh, muzzle brake uh, for 10K sometimes. And the mags go for about 15K, 12, 15K most of the time. So if you add all this up, it's a minimum of 250,000, but sometimes if you catch your prices right, you can push even more than 300,000 out of this firearm that some people sell for as little as 60 to 70,000. Now the supplies for a couple other guns, I'm not gonna go into great detail on them, I'll just point them out. But one of the other ones is like the short barrel M4s, you'll get them off of Raiders and stuff like that. They will actually have this short 260 millimeter barrel on there and that sells for a pretty penny. You can get sometimes 60, 70,000 for that. Uh, one of the other ones, my favorites is actually the SA-58. You'll get these out of boxes and stuff as well. And it's a specific one. It's the one that's got the MOE grip on it. Now, this guy right here left a ton of money on the table. He just sold this whole SA-58 for 90,000, 97-ish thousand, and he's hunky-dory. But things like the, the MOE rubber butt pad on here, that's worth 18 to 20,000. The uh, MOE stock, this black one, 30 to 40,000. The SA-58 uh, dust cover with the rails on it, another 20,000. All of those could have, he could have sold this SA-58 for 97,000 again, but got another 80,000 out of these parts, if not more. So that's tip one. Tip two is using attachments uh, to maximize the space in your rig. So if you get a scope, you can get a PSO scope or any kind of 30 millimeter, 34 millimeter mount. If you find these B13s in raid, I always pick these up, even if they're not worth much themselves. These things are worth a couple of thousand rubles, usually just end up vendoring them. What you can do is you can take a PSO and put it right on there and it becomes a one slot. So instead of two slots, it's one. It's in your secure container nicely or just down here and you have more space to loot in your backpack. Now this can be applied to things like B10 grips. There's a lot of these kind of hand guards out there and they all work as long as they have rails. I'll pick these up as well too, because if I find a, a, a hand grip and a laser and sometimes even a sight, I can put all four of these items on there and it just takes up one slot. And that's worth a ton of money right there. I'll use those. I can use all of those attachments, whether they're found in raid or not, whether I die with it or not, they're there, they're secure. Now I have all of that value crammed into one slot. Now there are hand guards that take this to the extreme. An old one that, it, that a lot of people use uh, is this XRSU 47SU. It goes on a uh, AK74, AKS74U um, gas tube and it becomes one slot. 
But this one slot can hold a PSO scope. It can hold a compact collimator or a, uh, a, a salt or a salt. Uh, I forget what it's called. Small, small optics, handguard, and then two additional lasers. All of that on one slot. I know guys that'll run reserve. They'll have one of those in your secure container. And as they loot attachments, they just throw them on there to maximize the value, even if they die. And there are several others out there, things like the Aggressor, the X-47, uh, that do the same thing. So use whatever you want to use and maximize the slots you can get in per raid. Now, the next one might be a no-brainer for some of you guys, but some people don't realize it. And it's just, when you're looting in raid, pick up rigs, even off scavs. These, as I love finding these azimuts on scavs because this one little rig that takes up 12 spots gives 20. So even with a scav backpack that has 20 slots, I take this azimut and put it in here, and now I have 28 because I got the eight here and the 20 inside of this, and that's tons of room to put all sorts of loot. And this works with things like CPC rigs, TV-110s. Uh, other rigs don't provide as much space. Generally, these ones that are three by fours are the ones that provide the additional space, but even some of the smaller ones like an idea rig and stuff will give you a few extra slots in your rig to get that much extra bit of loot out. Now, the next tip goes along with the azimuth kind of, it's about maximizing your space, getting out as much as you can. And it's specifically geared towards firearms, the AKs, AKMs, uh, AK-74s, things like that. As long as it doesn't have an AKS in it, some, an S somewhere in it, this will work for the moment, most of the AKs. And it's using the AKs disassemblability in RAID, that's not even a word, the ability to take it apart in RAID to get uh, as much of it taken down to give you more space. So let's say you stumble across a bunch of raiders or there's a bunch of dead players. Uh, you had a great raid, a bunch of chads are dead and you can get all their gear, right? You got one of their MK-47s, uh, an SVD, and this super kitted out AK-74N. Well, now you're stuck between choosing one of these guns, right? You think you're not. Now, even though you can collapse the SVD, it won't fit. The, AKS, the AK-74 will because these things you can take off the stock and you can take off the suppressor. And even though it doesn't give you any more slots, this will now fit here. You can put those two in there and you've got that whole gun, all the attachments, everything that goes along with it, along with the other two firearms. So when you're looking to fit a little bit extra space, don't be afraid to get rid of that stock if it's something that's not valuable or take off the suppressor and put it in another place that'll fit better for the Tetris. And my last tip is gonna be kind of a beating of the dead horse, but I love talking about them and it's use your barters. There are so many barters that'll save you a ton of money in this game. I do a bunch of videos about them to talk about them, but I'm gonna point out a couple here specifically that I use every day. One of them for being the Grizzly. I love using Grizzlies. Grizzlies sell anywhere from 30, 40, sometimes pushing 50,000 rubles depending on the time of night you shop. But I always get them for less than 25,000 because I gas analyzer and a UV lamp means this costs usually about 24, sometimes a little less, but no more than 25 uh, on any given day. And then after that is the fuel barter. I use the fuel barter all the time. It, they, they nerfed it recently. They made it a little bit more expensive, but it's still a great value. And then the lastly, backpacks. Uh, Ragman has a fantastic barter to get you a really good backpack. Uh, for anywhere from 40 to 60,000 rubles, depending on where you get your ES lamps. This is available on level two on him. Level two, you can get a tri-zip and run a tri-zip, which means you get more loot out of raid. And right now I can do it for about 40,000, uh, 45,000 rubles. We can get that for those four ES lamps to get that tri-zip. There's tons more barters. I do other videos. Make sure you go check those out if you want to see more. But long story short, use barters to save you money. But that's it. We'll wrap up the video there. Uh, don't forget to like if you got something out of the video. Appreciate you guys watching. Wish you the best of luck in your raids. And we'll see you in Tarkov.